today I wanted to talk about a topic that I get asked about frequently, and that's about tracking macros. So as many of you guys know, I follow a flexible dieting approach, which means that I have a set of macros that I aim to hit pretty closely every single day. Right now I'm in contest prep, so I aim to hit my macros within a couple of grams every day. So that's carbohydrates, fats, and protein. I'm a huge fan of the flexible dieting approach, and I even wrote an ebook about it back in like 2014 about flexible dieting for vegans. A lot of people say to me like, how can you live like that, tracking food all of the time and tracking everything to the gram? And you know, some people just don't jive really well with that style of dieting. And although it's my preferred approach to food tracking, I don't think that everybody has to follow a flexible dieting approach. There's so many different ways to track your food that can be very, very successful. So even though this is the way that I prefer and the way that most of my clients prefer, not all of my clients follow a flexible dieting approach. We tweak and finesse things to find the best possible approach for that client at that point in their life with their goals at that moment. So again, I'm in contest prep right now. I have a very specific goal and it's a big goal. So I wanna find the most specific way of tracking that I possibly can. So I have my set of macros and then I build a meal plan out of those macros. And I follow that meal plan until I kind of get sick of it and then I change it. So that's the flexibility that I have is that I can swap meals out as I kind of get sick of them. I can swap things out as I have social events that I have to attend and things like that. But I don't track everything this closely all year, all the time. When I'm not in competition prep, I much more loosely track. I'm not always pulling out a food scale for everything. I start to eyeball my portions more and more. But because I have this foundation of having tracked so carefully for so long, I'm really good at eyeballing and knowing what's in my food. And I think that's one of the things about flexible dieting is that there's an education component to it that as you do it, you learn more and more about the contents of certain foods. You learn which foods are more dense, which foods are lighter, which foods feel good in your stomach. Do you prefer and perform better on higher fats or higher carbs? These are all things that you do learn as you follow a flexible dieting approach. But it's like any other skill that you get better at it with practice, but that doesn't mean that you need to pull out all of your tools all the time. Look at some outstanding chefs. When they were learning, they probably followed a recipe to a T and practiced over and over and over again. But as they get better at it, they can pretty much just whip something up that's amazing by eyeballing the portions because they know what's going to work well in the recipe and they know the right amounts they need by sight. Flexible dieting and using it as a tool to learn how to eat better for your body is a really great way to look at it. So if you're not in a position where you need to be tracking everything to the gram, either as a learning tool or to reach a very specific goal, you can move towards more loosely tracking where you begin to eyeball your food and just tracking what you're eating by sight or by the hand measurements that we've talked about in another video in the emotional eating series where you know a serving of rice that's about the size of your fist is going to be about 30 grams of carbs like you just know that from having practiced it for a while so that's another way to set it up is just by loosely tracking after that you can move towards more habit-based eating where perhaps you make sure that you're eating say three square meals a day and two snacks and in the three square meals, you're eating a serving of protein, a serving of complex carbohydrates, a small serving of fat, and a serving of vegetables or two servings of vegetables. And setting up structures like that so you don't have to pull out measuring cups, pull out scales, pull out food journals. You just know what a square meal looks like and you're able to make that happen a few times a day. That is a really great way to progress from tracking every single macro to the gram. So there's, there's steps here that you can take to move towards more intuitive eating. So intuitive eating is all the way on this side of the spectrum and then macro tracking is all the way on this side of the spectrum where this one is much more loose and based on your feelings and your knowledge. So having a knowledge base is important for successful intuitive eating. And then all the way over here is just 
macro tracking. It's numbers, it's weighing, it's measuring, it's very, very rigid, which is great if you have very specific goals that are hard to reach any other way. And also it's great just to do for a period of time. If you've never tracked your food at all, you have no idea what's in the food that you're eating, then going through even just a month of doing this is a really, really great way to learn. You'll be surprised at how much you learn just by doing this for a short period of time. After the habit-based eating, where you focus on eating a certain number of meals set up in a certain way throughout the day, you can begin to move more towards intuitive eating, which is where you are gonna focus mostly on your hunger and fullness cues. So noticing when your stomach starts to get a little bit grumbly and eating when you're hungry and it's stopping when you are satisfied or just full. You know, this is the ideal of intuitive eating. It's when you're really, really able to tune in to your body's own cues and then honor those cues. So it's not quite enough to just notice when you're getting hungry. You actually have to eat when you're at a certain hunger point and then stop when you're a certain fullness point. Intuitive eating is not just eating whatever you want, whenever you want, necessarily. Because a lot of people say, well, if I just intuitively ate, I would just eat ice cream nonstop until I exploded. And if you try to jump into intuitive eating too quickly, that might be the case. But if you ease yourself into it with these steps, then you're gonna have a much better time because it's not like you're gonna go from being in a super rigid place to suddenly all the reins are off. If you can back out of macro tracking and move more towards intuitive eating and look at them as different steps along a journey, then you're gonna have a much more successful time. Likewise, when you do have more specific goals, you can take the necessary steps back towards the macro tracking without necessarily having to pull a 180 and decide that you're gonna go from not tracking anything at all whatsoever to suddenly you're gonna track every macro to the gram. I mean, that might be successful physically and aesthetically towards your goals, but it can wreak havoc mentally because you can become too attached to the macro tracking and think that's the only way to make progress when really there's a lot of other more moderate steps that you could take along the way to continue to make pretty decent progress. It's important that we always think about using the minimum effective dose of everything that we can in fitness and I suppose in life really, so that you don't always have to go to one extreme or another to elicit a response. If you use your knowledge base and the practice that you put in at all of these different steps over the year, then they're just more tools in your tool belt that you can call upon as you need them to get the results that you want without having to go overboard in any direction. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Again, I am a huge fan of tracking macros, of flexible dieting. I will probably use some form of flexible dieting for the foreseeable future on season or off, but with sprinkles of intuitive eating, habit-based eating, all of these things are all sprinkled in there. It's a spectrum that you can slide up and down upon. It's not necessarily just on or off. So let me know if you have any questions or comments about this, or if you have any experience and where you prefer to fall on the spectrum, let me know. And I look forward to hearing from you guys and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.